Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with another guide for Demon Souls Remake. This time, I am going to show you how to get a weapon that most people don't even know exists, but it's one of the strongest weapons in the entire game. That weapon is the Phosphorescent Pole. The only way to get the Phosphorescent Pole is to defeat Lord Rydell's Black Phantom in level 3-1, the Prison of Hope in Tower of Latria. But in order to even fight Lord Rydell's Black Phantom, you need pure Black World Tendency in this world. So, quick crash course on World Tendency. You'll notice that there is a symbol underneath the Archstone of the Tower Queen, which is for Tower of Latria. That symbol is oozing a black mist with purple and black particle effects. That means that I have pure Black World Tendency. In contrast to this, the Archstone of the Chieftain for Valley Defilement, that world has pure White World Tendency, noted by the white mist and white particle effects coming off of the symbol underneath. The quickest way to reach pure black world tendency is to use the stone of ephemeral eyes to restore body form and then die. You want to do that over and over and over until you reach pure black world tendency. If you're starting at pure white world tendency, you will need to do that process seven or eight times, depending on how far into pure white world tendency you are, because it is a bit of a sliding scale, but you'll need to die in body form seven or eight times to go from pure white to pure black. Something very important to note is that World Tendency does not update until you use an Archstone. So you can die eight times in a row in body, excuse me, in body form over and over and over, and the World Tendency changes will get stored, but they will not go into effect until you use an Archstone. So you don't have to use an Archstone every time, but once you feel like you're close to pure black, start using it this way. You can keep track of the World Tendency changes a bit better. Okay. So with that out of the way, let's get moving. I'm gonna assume that you have all the doors open in Tower of Latria. This way we can just run right to Rydell's location. You do not need the key to his cell in order to fight his Black Phantom. Uh, he's not actually even in the cell. So you just gotta run to his location and uh, you can fight him. So we gotta kill some jailers along the way. I will warn you that Rydell is incredibly strong because he is using that phosphorescent pole that we need so badly. And you want to make sure that you have uh, a shield that has high magic and high uh, physical damage reduction. And I will explain that better once we get to his location. So this is where things can get a little confusing on the path, so I'll take it slow from here. We're going to go down this set of staircases, and then there is another staircase in this narrow passageway here. That one's easy to forget, and it's always easy to miss. So we're gonna run through here, and we're gonna go down one more flight of stairs and exit on this level. However, there is a jailer in this hallway that we gotta be careful of. Here he comes. That person's using a butcher's knife to try to fight him. All right, wait for him to turn around, and we can probably get a backstab. Nope, never mind. That was close. All right, so with that jailer down, you can see Rydell in the distance there. I'm going to stop right here and sort of explain what we're going to do. So my setup is as follows. I'm using a Fatal S-Stock plus 5. The Fatal upgrade path increases critical damage at the sacrifice of base damage. So if you just want to fight him straight up, just use a regular weapon. But I'm going to rely on parrying and backstabs. Uh, so Fatal is my weapon of choice. I have the Dark Silver Shield. This is dropped by Garl Vinland in Valley of Defilement. That is the knight that is guarding Maiden Astraea during the boss fight. So if you've killed Maiden Astraea, you should have this shield. Um, the reason I'm using this specific shield is because it has 100% physical damage reduction and 100% magical damage reduction. The phosphorescent pole that Rydell is using deals both physical and magic damage. So it's very, very important that you use a shield that has high physical and magical damage reduction ratings. If you don't, you're basically, there's no point in even using a shield if you don't do this. He can one-shot you really, really easily. I'm on New Game Plus 4, so that may be why it keeps happening to me, but I've died to him, I think, 11 times now because he is just so strong with this weapon. Okay. In addition to those things, I also have the Talisman of Beasts. However, I'm not going to rely on magic for this fight for the simple fact that it's not effective against him. It's just not. Um, he has a high magic resistance, so... Firestorm, Fire Spray, they're just not going to do much to him. Toxic Cloud might work, I think. Let me see if I still have his page open. 
No, I don't. Uh, I'm not going to suggest doing uh, Toxic Mist or anything. Instead, we're just going to rely on parrying. I have the Grave Robber's Ring equipped, and this is for one reason, and one reason only. If you don't, he aggro's a lot faster, and then you wind up having to fight him in this tight space, which is good and bad. It's good because the pull is in his right arm, and if you can make him sort of hug this wall, he can't actually hit you with it. It will constantly just bonk off the wall. Um, but that also means that your weapons can bonk off the wall, and you can be in a lot of trouble if that happens against him. The other ring I have equipped is the Master's Ring, which increases my critical damage. So parrying and backstabs are going to do more damage with the Master's Ring. Okay, so my rule of thumb when fighting anybody is you watch the enemy's hand and parry when the hand moves towards you. All right, here we go. Let's fight Rydell. All right. So now that we've parried him, I'm going to try to do it again. And then eventually... Oh, God damn it. Holy shit. Yeah, when he two hands that thing, it's it's like over. Jesus, I cannot believe I just lived with like one HP. That was insane. Really thought I died. I feel like I've got to do it now. I feel like this has to be the run. <sighs> Hopefully I can just keep him in this little loop where he does that one attack. All right. When he's under 30% health, his dull rat's ring will kick in. So he's going to deal even more damage to us. Oh my god, he's got like one HP left. Just going to try to force it now. Yes. Oh my god, thank god. Okay. So now that Rydell is dead, we have the Phosphorescent Pole. And I'll show you the required stats for that. The Phosphorescent Pole has a requirement of 16 strength and 16 dexterity. And you level this up using colorless demon souls. This goes up to plus five. It's a really, really good weapon with a really interesting move set. So let's just sort of showcase that here now. So one-handed, we have sort of a lumbering swing with R1. R2 is this big sweeping swing. Great. And then let's see the two hand. Great, so the two hand is sort of just an overhead smash. And then R2 is a spin attack, but you can just sort of keep spamming the R2 and you do this like interesting little combination platter. Let's do that one handed. Yeah, so you go back and forth. Yeah, sort of in a crisscross here. So, yeah. So it's a really cool moveset, and the stats on it aren't bad either. Scales uh, C with strength and E with dex, but it deals magic damage as well. So we upgrade this with Ko's Demon Souls, which um, you can get a bunch of in a playthrough, so it's, it's not bad. All right, so I'm not really sure how that edit's gonna play out, but I can confirm to you that killing Rydell's Black Phantom in pure Black World Tendency does not affect you freeing him in pure White World Tendency. So the Blue Phantom still appears, and as long as you have the key, you can free him, and he will still be friendly to you. I don't think his dialogue should change at all. Why? Thank you. No. So he also gives you the dull rat's ring still, and then he should unlock for us the, um, yep, so this rubble is gone in pure white world tendency, and then freeing him should unlock the door downstairs. I'll run there really fast. It's just on the, uh, the floor below us, so this will only take a second, but this should not affect his quest line at all. Should it be able to open this door over here. It's just past the uh, prisoner horde thing. This enemy freaks me out. There should be a door here that we can open. You need the one F key to open this. Okay, and then freeing Rydell opens this door up here. Right. Cool, yeah, so now we can open this door and then get the rest of the treasure in Latria. Very cool. I'm glad that that all worked. So I, I really wasn't sure how that was going to play out. I wasn't sure if you can kill the Black Phantom and keep uh, rescuing the Blue Phantom for the rest of the quest line. But that's it. That's how you get the Phosphorescent Pole. It's a really good weapon. It's hard to get, especially on high new game cycles, because Rydell is just so strong with that weapon. But try it out in PvP. It'll confuse a lot of people. They don't really know what to do about it because it's so rarely seen. But that's it. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for Demon Souls Remastered, 
Subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new guides go live. If you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and on Twitch, and as always, I'm Sweet Johnny Cage. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.